May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. January 15, 2024, Monday of the Second Week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Then Samuel said to Saul, Permit me, and I will reveal to you what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said to him, Speak. And Samuel said, Was it not when you were little in your own eyes that you were made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed you as king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on the way, and he said, Go and put to death the sinners of Amalek. And you shall fight against them, even unto utter annihilation. Why then, did you not listen to the voice of the Lord? Instead, you turned to the spoils, and you did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And Saul said to Samuel, On the contrary, I did listen to the voice of the Lord, and I walked in the way along which the Lord sent me, and I led back Agag, the king of Amalek, and I put to death Amalek. But the people took some of the spoils, sheep and oxen, as the firstfruits of those things that were slain, to immolate to the Lord their God at Gilgal. And Samuel said, Does the Lord want holocausts and victims, and not instead that the voice of the Lord should be obeyed? For obedience is better than sacrifice, and to heed is greater than to offer the fat of rams. Therefore, it is like the sin of paganism to rebel, and it is like the crime of idolatry to refuse to obey. For this reason, therefore, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord has also rejected you from being king. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. I will not reprove you for your sacrifices, and your burnt offerings are always in my sight. I will not take calves out of your house, nor he goats out of your flocks. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you declare my justices, and take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you have hated discipline, and have cast my words behind you. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. These things have you done, and I was silent. You thought unjustly that I should be like to you, but I will reprove you, and set before your face. The sacrifice of praise shall glorify me, and there is the way by which I will show him the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees were fasting. And they arrived and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, How can the sons of the wedding fast while the groom is still with them? During whatever time they have the groom with them, they are not able to fast. But the days will arrive when the groom will be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in those days. No one sews a patch of new cloth onto an old garment. Otherwise, the new addition pulls away from the old, and the tear becomes worse. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the wineskins, and the wine will pour out, and the wineskins will be lost. Instead, new wine must be put into new wineskins. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How does fasting help us draw closer to God during challenging times? And how can it strengthen our connection with Christ in our daily lives? 
Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. Mark 2 verses 19 to 20 The passage above reveals Jesus' response to the disciples of John the Baptist and some Pharisees who question Jesus about fasting. They point out that the disciples of John and the Pharisees each follow the Jewish laws on fasting, but Jesus' disciples do not. Jesus' answer goes to the heart of the new law on fasting. Fasting is a wonderful spiritual practice. It helps to strengthen the will against disordered fleshly temptations and helps to bring purity to one's soul. But it needs to be pointed out that fasting is not an eternal reality. One day, when we are face to face with God in heaven, there will no longer be any need to fast or do any form of penance. But while on earth, we will struggle and fall and lose our way, and one of the best spiritual practices to help us return to Christ is prayer and fasting combined. Fasting becomes necessary when the bridegroom is taken away. In other words, fasting is necessary when we sin and our union with Christ begins to fade. It is then that the personal sacrifice of fasting helps open our hearts once again to our Lord. This is especially true when habits of sin form and become deeply ingrained. Fasting adds much power to our prayer and stretches our souls so as to be able to receive the new wine of God's grace, where we need it the most. Reflect today upon your approach to fasting and other penitential practices. Do you fast? Do you make regular sacrifices so as to strengthen your will and help you to turn more fully to Christ? Or has this healthy spiritual practice been somewhat neglected in your life? Renew your commitment to this holy endeavor today, and God will work powerfully in your life. Let us pray. Lord, I open my heart to the new wine of grace that you wish to pour forth upon me. Help me to be properly disposed to this grace and to use every means necessary to become more open to you. Help me especially to commit to the wonderful spiritual practice of fasting. May this act of mortification in my life bear abundant fruit for your kingdom. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.